Tonight we're talking about youth addiction to mobile phones and with me in studio is Zakia Rashid, a counseling psychologist and Lindsay Nyawera, a teenager who is going to, to be giving us uh, experience as far as uh, the addiction to mo mobile phones is concerned. Uh, you can be part of this conversation by tweeting and sharing your views and comments on our social media platforms. That is on Y254 channel, hashtag Y254 news on Twitter and also Y254 channel on Facebook. Cell phone addiction is a modern phenomenon and has put many traditional assumptions to the test. In the past, addiction meant something different to parents, where parents were more worried about their kids being addicted to cocaine, heroin, and nicotine. Today, the addiction landscape has shifted. Teens hooked to their smartphones for seven hours on average each day. Teenage cell phone addiction goes well beyond texting and talking. It includes apps, games, and in particular, social media. For teens, cell phones have become a way to comment and criticize, approve and admire. They are not always communicating with friends. Often, they are commenting on their activities, checking for likes and responses to their own posts. The clinical community defines cell phone addiction as a behavioral disorder, which means obsessive obsessive views that affect everyday functioning. Like any addiction, once triggered, it can be quite difficult to stop. There's a biological component to this behavior. The brain reacts to the cell phone as if it were a, rag, as if it were a drug. Studies have shown that both the, the phone ringing and the, and the alert of a new text cause the brain to release dopamine. So that is basically some of the effects that the mobile phone, or that is how far uh, addiction has really become. It has become an issue of concern in the society that is in Kenya and even uh, globally. But tonight we seek to understand how far can you stay without checking your phone? Or how many times in a day do you check uh, your phone? And starting this discussion uh, tonight, I would like to start with my first question, uh, directing it to Lindsay, as a young person probably, how many day, how many times do you check your phone? And for the, those times that you're checking your phone, what would you be doing? Uh, to start with? I cannot do without my phone. Okay. So sometimes I usually check on nothing, mm -hmm. but I just have that habit that um, I need to have my phone. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I even have this um, behavior when you're talking to me, mm -hmm. I'm looking at my phone, but okay. when you ask me what you, are you looking at, mm -hmm. I can't answer. Okay. Probably I'm looking for new notifications mm -hmm. uh, because I'm in social media sites. I'm mm -hmm. looking whether my tweets have been retweeted okay. or whether my, uh, my, my Instagram pictures have been liked. Mm -hmm or whether there's something trendy so mm -hmm. that I can actually post it okay. or be the first one to retreat it. Okay. Yes. Uh, so, Zakia, you might be a counseling psychologist, but you're also a person with a smartphone. Uh, this is not something that is only affecting uh, the teenagers. As much as the teenagers are the higher percentage of people who are getting addicted to their phones, adults to these days, most of the times you find them who are on their phones, especially people driving. You can find someone they are driving, and maybe when they are waiting for the green light to say go, people will go to check on their phones. How many times in a day do you check your phone? Okay, thank you, Patricia. And uh, I'm laughing because I find it a little bit, um, it's a tough question. Yeah, yeah. I can't, I may not really be able to count the numbers, mm -hmm. you know, in terms of how many times I check my phone. Mm -hmm. But I can say that I'm very much sure that um, I may not exceed the limit where I say I'm addicted mm -hmm. to my phone. Okay. Personally, I can leave my phone home, go to work or go to town or go to wherever, mm -hmm. and I'll not crave for my phone simply because I left it in the house or mm -hmm. even rethink of going back okay. to go and get my phone. Okay. I'll just say, ah, forgot it, so be it. Mm -hmm. Let me move on. I'll get in the evening and check what cold was and cold and life goes on. Okay. Uh, we, we, are, we are living in an era whereby... Uh, parents, when your when your little baby cries, you just give them your phone. You put on a game, put on a cartoon for them, and give them that phone. Parents are more secure these days to have their children in the house, hooked in their iPads, the phones, and everything, than have their kids playing outside. So probably, what would you say is are the dangers that parents are giving or uh, exposing their kids to at a, at certain at, at such an early age? Uh, first of all, I can say it is um, really sad 
that such a uh, situation scenarios are happening mm -hmm. because we think that sometimes I think we do the uh, parents do these things you know um, unintentionally mm -hmm. because sometimes they are also busy they are also you know uh, caught up in their own issues yes. and they don't stop to think that when I throw this phone at the child to start uh, looking at the cartoons or whatever mm -hmm. I am causing damage to this child okay first of all health wise mm -hmm. health wise it means that these phones have um, lots of uh, 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 you know what, what? What do we say? Things that are not okay health-wise. Yeah, yeah. uh, they are using things, things like um, radio shows. Mm -hmm. All those things are happening in the, in the phone because these things we are told they are not even good when you sleep around them because yes. they em emit uh, certain, um, let's say, gases mm -hmm. or uh, radiation that are not good for the health. Mm -hmm. So when we leave the children with these things already from day one, mm -hmm. we are co it's health hazard to the children. Mm -hmm. We are causing them damage health-wise, and we are not so sure what is happening. And these are not some of the things that are happening like um, what, you know, you know, there and then. Mm -hmm. This is things that are happening systematically. Mm -hmm. So with the time, we may realize this child maybe may not be feeling well. Maybe their ears are not hearing well. Okay. Maybe uh, somewhere there maybe there's eye damage, mm -hmm. ear damage, mm -hmm. and yet we may not be able to trace back and say this is the phone mm -hmm. until maybe an expert gets to tell us that this has happened because mm -hmm. of the phone. Okay. So sometimes we forget that these are things that may happen. Mm -hmm. uh, we just rethink, think of it's now here and now I mm -hmm. use this. It's a toy. Mm -hmm. Th that is not a toy. Okay. A phone or any other uh, like, uh, mobile device is not a toy. Okay. Yes. Uh, so Lindsay, for you, when uh, at what age did your parents get you a phone? I got my phone when I was in class seven. When that was um, I was thirteen years okay. around. Okay. And do you have do you have siblings? Do you have younger? Siblings? Yes, I do have younger siblings. And do they have? Do they own mobile yes, phones? Yes, they have mobile phones. Actually, a case and scenario is um, when my young brother wanted a phone, and my dad didn't really was wondering why do you need a phone? Mm -hmm. You're still in primary school. You're still learning. Mm -hmm. Actually, you're just here once in a while on Saturdays, and he had to cry for that phone, mm -hmm. and he had it because his reasoning was every person has it. Mm -hmm. How am so I supposed? I also have to get it. Exactly, and. Um, just as um, one thing I know is we are times have changed. Mm -hmm. We're also learning so much from technology. Mm -hmm. Myself, I'm the kind of woman who will give my daughter the phone because there's so much they're learning rather than playing with kids outside. But sometimes, don't you think that it's damage? For example, if I asked you, what does your brother do on their phone? Like, what type of content do they assess on the phone? And how many times, probably, how many hours do they spend on that phone after school? To be honest, um, we don't check because there's a time he, actually the reason why my parents bought him a phone, other than the fact that uh, his friends have a phone, mm -hmm. it's because he had once logged in using my mom's phone on Instagram. Then my mom saw some messages on Instagram and he was like, I, am, I have to get you a phone because I don't want to be receiving such content on okay. my phone. Zaki, having to hear that, this parent was so concerned, but she saw some type of messages that she was like, I don't think these messages are supposed to be channeled through my phone. And deciding that I'm going to get my son his own phone. Has she helped? Or is she just like creating an avenue whereby now these messages can keep on coming, this kid can keep on uh, assessing such content uh, over the phone? It is really, again, <laughs> very sad. Because it's like um, you are trying to you know, dig up one hole and covering the other. Mm -hmm. So it is not a helping situation because it means, simply means that in that situation, it means that it is okay for that child to get that information so long as the mother does not see it. Mm -hmm. It does not come through me. It is okay. It's Whatever he checks, okay. mm -hmm. it is okay. Mm -hmm. But the question is, is that really okay? Mm -hmm. Because what if that content is not also good for that child? Because depending on what the mother saw, it could be detrimental information. Yeah. But is it okay if that child gets to see so long as that is his or her phone? Mm -hmm. That is the question. Mm -hmm. So I think these are misplaced priorities. Mm -hmm. uh, we tend to think that um, by making, giving them their phones, we are actually settling the dispute, making the situation better. Mm -hmm. But we are making the situation even worse. Mm -hmm. Because I'd rather this child use my phone, I get to see the information that's channeled through my phone mm -hmm. and get to deal with it, how I talk to my child, how I make them understand that maybe this content is not for them okay. or there's a time for this content, than hide that information by making sure that it does not pass through me. Okay, yes. I really like what you've said. But now, do you think, at what age probably would we say these kids should be now allowed? I know you're saying that uh, technology is, there are a lot of innovations, but are we going to let these innovations 
cause damage to our kids, to our sisters, to our younger brothers? The answer, Patricia, is no. Mm -hmm. We should not let this technology damage our children, our sisters, our brothers, and our friends. Mm -hmm. The thing is, we cannot say that there is a specific age set for a child to get a phone. Mm -hmm. But as parents, as the people concerned, as the significant others, there are some questions we need to ask ourselves. Mm -hmm. For example, a seven-year-old, what are they supposed to get a phone for? Yeah. Is it because they're accessing school material? Mm -hmm. And if it's a school material, what kind of school material is that that they're not getting from school? Mm -hmm. It has to come from the phone. Mm -hmm. Second, is it communication? Because if it's communication, where is this child for this person to be able to communicate with? Because as a parent and as a seven-year-old, it means either there's a nun in the house. Mm -hmm. If I want general information, I have to call the nun and say, I want to talk to my child. Okay, okay. I don't have to call that child straight away. Mm -hmm. Then if it is another, you know, that kind of communication, again, I do not have have to uh, communicate to the child directly, mm -hmm. especially when I'm not around. Okay. Because some uh, parents have argued that when I'm at work, when I'm doing this and that, I have to call my child, get to know how they are doing. Mm -hmm. I can't just be asking the nanny, mm -hmm. but you brought that nanny in there and you trust that nanny. That's mm -hmm. why you brought that nanny yeah. to the house in the first place. Okay. So if you do not that, uh, like the information she's giving you, why are you leaving that nanny with your child? Okay. Yes. Uh, so in terms of addiction, Lindsay, would you say you're addicted to your phone? Sorry? Would you say that you're addicted to your phone? Of course, Have you gotten for to that me, point? I'd say yes, I'm addicted, uh -huh. but it's not a disorder. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'd really say that, yes, I'm addicted because I cannot concentrate without my phone. Like mm -hmm. you said, if I left my phone in the house, I would go back for it mm -hmm. because I can't imagine a day without it. Mm -hmm. A case in scenario is when I was traveling mm -hmm. and then my phone got stolen in a matatu. Mm -hmm. It was 10 p.m. and uh, I'm there calling my mom crying with the uh, with Mpesa agent's number. Mm -hmm. Hey, my phone has gotten lost and I can't come home. I mean, no, phone. not even that. I'm standing at an Mpesa shop and they're selling phones. My mom said but you know those phones are not legit i was like let me just buy it for tonight because it's but not expensive wouldn't you say at the moment you're by your phone gets lost and you cannot you can't go home this is it's a 10 p.m and you feel like these attachments that you have with your phone you can't go home can't we call that addiction? Is that not addiction? Maybe probably let's mm. like here as a counseling psychologist to help us with that because she has said she cannot leave the house and probably learn that she has forgotten a phone and go about the day without going back and taking that phone. Is that not addiction? That is, Lindsay, I'm sorry to say this, that that is addiction, pure addiction. Because again, we ask ourselves, how do we assess to get to know that this is addiction mm -hmm. and, and this, this hasn't reached the point where we call mm -hmm. it addiction? Mm -hmm. It is, first of all, you can't keep your hands off the phone, not even for three minutes. Mm -hmm. Or does even go up to five minutes? I can keep my hands off my phone for even a whole day okay. and I have no problem with mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. But now if you cannot keep your hands off the phone for even five minutes, or the phone has to be wherever you are seated. Mm -hmm. You see people are eating and the phone is just there. Yeah. You see people are talking to someone and the phone is just there. These days it has become even, a behavior in church. It's, it's a behavior. People will go you can to imagine. check their phones. Eh? While the pastor is up there preaching, you, you or can the imagine. Priest is giving the and then we also say that when you see an individual now, you are going to bed and the phone has to be somewhere next, which is again is, a, is also a health hazard. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. We sleep, people sleep next to their phones, mm -hmm. and we've seen even in social media, the very same social media, yes. telling us how things are exploding, mm -hmm. you know, around there and people have died. Yeah. That is, if at all, it's true. But again, we say, yes, it's health hazard to even our ears, to even our eyes, to even our brains. Okay. So we're actually feeding our brains with a lot of stuff, mm -hmm. apart from, from just hearing and, you know, getting the information. Mm -hmm. So that is addiction. Okay. Because again, we say, for how long can you stay without a phone? And we say, if you stay without a phone, do you get what you call withdrawal symptoms? That if I don't have a phone, I'm agitated, I have anxiety, I'm mm -hmm. almost getting depressed. Okay. That is, yes, mm -hmm. preoccupation with a phone. Most of the time, you're just preoccupied with uh, a new phone in town, the new make, the digital one. That already says there is something. Okay. Um, uh, Linda shared with me something we were still working in. I hope you will allow, allow me to share. When she said her phone is just not a 5,000 shillings phone. And every other time she has this phone that costs her almost a fortune, she will still crave another one, mm -hmm. which costs more than that. Okay. Question, what are you doing with all this? Mm -hmm. It's because that of that craving for new material. You know, the idea or the thought is that when I get this one is so modernized, yes. even the material, the, the content will be better. Yeah, the you know, I'll be getting good are going pictures. To be better, yeah. I'll be getting, you know, the information is very clear. The pictures mm -hmm. are so good. And all these things put together and make people, yeah, that is addiction. Okay. Yes. Uh, we're going to take a very short break. 
break and when we come back we'll be talking about how phone addiction affects sleep patterns and health wise and don't go far away we have way lot uh, of things to cover on this discussion we'll be right back on y254 news updates Y254 Imagine Kila mtu anasema mara anaimba kama harmonize mwingine Willy Po wengine Ali Kiba kwa hiyo kila mtu anaongea na chakula Diamond Kona Po exclusive entertainment Join me a full imboko Anni Filin Adisa on Karaoke Live see you Wednesday Need the champ a ticket don't let me on the show me you are cool Come on, sick to shame me. I, I, you're chilly. Hey, yeah. Oh, to me, more gaunga. Why two five four? Imagine. Thank you for staying with us on Y254 News Updates. And we're talking about youth addiction to mobile phones. You can be part of this conversation by sharing your views and comments on our social media platforms. That is on Twitter at Y254 channel, hashtag Y254 News, and on Facebook at Y254 channel. So we're going to look at... I'll just go through some uh, of uh, effects of, mo of mobile phone uh, overuse. We have social comparison, we have health problems, we have antisocial tendencies, we have, so we have psychological problems, and then we have nighttime phone use. Uh, we realize that uh, using mobile phones, some people don't sleep at all. So we have poor sleeping habits, depression and delinquency, self-esteem and emotional well-being. We have phone, phone time replaces sleep, uh, content stimulates brain, depressed teenagers use social media more, and screen light suppresses melatonin. When you tell a young person that uh, being uh, on the phone, uh, most of the times it's going to affect their sleep patterns, they, w they seem to argue with it because you've gotten used to this. It has become a habit. So you don't have struggle sleeping. You're used to the two hours that probably or four hours you get uh, to sleep. So Zakia, what do you think now should be, like, what do we tell to these young people? How do we convince them that this thing is so, so dangerous and you guys, like, need to find other activities that are more productive to do, to engage in? Okay, thank you, Patricia. I think, first of all, um, sensitization is very, very important mm -hmm. and what we call now psychoeducation mm -hmm. because telling somebody that this is uh, not okay without any proof sometimes becomes so difficult mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because they are not in a position to see the effects. Mm -hmm. You know, the effects are not tangible. It's not something they can see and say, okay, I just uh, didn't sleep yesterday or I spent a lot of time on phone. Yeah. Today I have, for example, a headache. Yeah, it's true. But some of them even go through that. They can actually associate their headaches and all that with uh, the issues with not sleeping because of their phones, mm -hmm. but still they will not want to admit to the mm -hmm. fact that they are not okay. Mm -hmm. So what we, we say that a lot of psychoeducation is very important. And in psychoeducation, we have to involve the medics mm -hmm. to make them, you know, you, you know, uh, make people understand that this is not just a short-term kind of effect. It mm -hmm. takes time or it happens after a very long time and you may not be able to see it, you okay. know, through the naked eye. Mm -hmm. It's something that is happening internally. Like now, when you are talking about cancer, we are told some of cancers are because of radiation. Yeah. Now, this and radiation, some phone, of the, all these the things are through the phones. So when you are sleeping and your phone is just 
just next to your pillow or just under your pillow mm -hmm. what do you think is getting inside your, your okay. body okay. so if we do not psycho educate them in this manner to make them understand then it's hard just to stand there and say you know our phone is bad they ask you how okay. you know how now and mm -hmm. you cannot prove because you have nothing tangible evidence to tell them okay. so that one is very important second let's ha uh, be able to assess their performance mm -hmm. because most of the time the youth especially you know the millennials as we call them we have to assess the pattern of their performance mm -hmm. and that way you are able to argue with them because some of them in fact majority will will will, will, will not be able to uh, even are not even able to perform mm -hmm. well for example in schools mm -hmm. or, or even at work okay. they will sleep or even oversleep because if somebody sleeps at three or four and they're supposed to wake up at for example um six mm -hmm. you'll find some of them dozing, uh, will off, just in class, dozing yeah. off in class some of them who are going to work will not even go you know uh, be Get there to, to work yeah. around the time that is supposed they are supposed to be there mm -hmm. and they'll always be giving so many excuses in fact when you go to an office and find people giving so many excuses yesterday they had this excuse tomorrow this they'll even kill people even their <laughs> relatives just to make it you know look like something really happened yeah. they'll even cause an accident where there wasn't mm -hmm. just to prove their point that and something happened that's why i'm coming late okay. so when we see these people or mm -hmm. these kind of excuses then we are able to tell something is not right mm -hmm. and we should be able to text to, to talk straightforward to these people and tell them no something okay. is not right with you mm -hmm. kindly go and get help okay so lindsay we've talked about how phone addiction as, uh, affects someone's sleep uh we, we, there are also cases whereby it can affect uh, the posture on which you you are uh, as you use your mobile phone uh sometimes the spinal cord or the area uh, around the neck can be affected having heard about all these things what do you think probably as a young person because now you represent the the, the the number of young people out there what do you think can be done as a young person what other activities do you think that youths can be encouraged to to get into to avoid uh being on the phone for a very long time so first of all, I think more activities that entails people. Mm -hmm. It could be sporting activities mm -hmm. because that will keep you busy mm -hmm. off your phone mm -hmm. and you don't get a time. Uh, you don't get even time yeah. to actually touch your phone. That's mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. uh, it can also be. Um, these gatherings that happen and then you have talk sessions, those mm -hmm. activities, we have drama. Mm -hmm. You see, these are activities that are very strenuous and mm -hmm. sometimes you don't even get time mm -hmm. to to even have a break and have your phone. Okay. Let's even talk about gym. That's exercise, you know? Mm -hmm. You're exercising, you can't exercise with your phone. Mm -hmm. So some of these activities that will actually put you so much on the uh, uh, on it so that you can't even, even get time to, to go and to, use your yeah, mobile and use phone. Your phone. Uh, as we were speaking earlier, you talked about social media. You talked about how when you're on your phone, you, you go through Instagram and all those things. If after this show, we were to take a picture and you posted it on your social media platforms, let's say Facebook or Instagram, and you didn't get, like, how many likes would you get and feel like, I, I, I now got it? First, uh, my achievement is, uh, how many followers do I have? How many followers do you have on Instagram? For example, mm -hmm. uh, I have a new account. Mm -hmm. And the new account that I opened actually last week, I'm mm -hmm. only following 40 mm -hmm. people. But my following is uh, 2,000, I guess. Oh, God. And you started last and week. Yes. If I tell and you how and when <laughs> I started my Instagram <laughs> account and how many followers I have. OK. So actually, I'm very key. If I put a picture right now and in seconds I don't see any like, then I remove it. But why? Because that is <laughs> like you're going now, you're seeking validation out there. The reward. Yeah. You're seeking validation out there. Don't you think that this is something that you really need to work on? Not really. What I think is uh, uh, um, in social media, what do people want to see? Mm -hmm. For example, for you to have such a following and yet you're following very few, which mm -hmm. doesn't really happen, mm -hmm. then if I take a picture right now uh, holding this mic, do the kind of followers I have, do they want to see that really? Mm -hmm. Okay. For example, mm -hmm. if I place this picture pr probably on Twitter, I'd get so many likes mm -hmm. because people, are, people will be motivated. Oh, okay, she was talking about this and this and this. Okay, so Instagram yeah. people don't like people holding mics? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> that is what you're trying to say? No, they don't want it serious. all depends on the audience. Uh -huh. you, see, you see, Instagram is not really serious. Mm -hmm. You see, Instagram, you'd get more likes, for example, if you took a picture mm -hmm. on the beach. Okay. You understand? But then don't yeah. you think, we've had, uh, we've had instances whereby young people have committed suicide because they posted a picture, someone did not like them, people commented so negatively about them, and there was no one to see it because we've taken this in to be a very normal thing. And people have done terrible, terrible things because of it. Don't you think this is something that should be addressed? Don't you think we need to have better ways on how 
to make people feel validated before you get to social media and seek for validation from there? To, to be honest, yes, at some point, because I can tell you, uh, recently we had a case of um, a, a person mm -hmm. on, um, on Twitter. Twitter is um, known for the mature people and yeah. the working class. Mm -hmm. But also, we saw how people actually, even peop celebrities, mm -hmm. attacked a young guy calling himself um, an entertainer who was actually yeah. is a brand. Bra a br yeah. Yes. And the last comment that guy gave was, I don't think I deserve to be in this world. Yeah. So from that, you can see that also uh, social media comes with its own pressure mm -hmm. and um, it needs you to be very strong mm -hmm. because this is someone whose uh, image has been circulating mm -hmm. and this is someone who um, people have been retreating mm -hmm. his image mm -hmm. and so he's even shy because to even stand up and approach people because he's lost his credibility. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Uh, let me go through something here. In 2008, China became the first country to declare internet addiction among children as a clinical disorder according to gaming companies and advised gaming companies to set a cap on how much time children can spend on their play, uh, uh, playing online. 24 million young people in China are estimated to be internet addicts. As a result, the, gov the US government also started a program uh, last year whereby people can go to be treated, or it's a rehabilitation center from uh, to help you uh, now heal from uh, phone addiction. And also, the Chinese government has 400 centers. Do you think Kenya needs one of these centers? Do we need one? We don't need one, Patricia. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We need many. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we need many. Okay. Mm -hmm. Why? Because we have to nip this problem. Yeah, th th this problem in the bud. Mm -hmm. We don't have to wait until you know. Looking at that, at our population mm -hmm. and China, as we would mm -hmm. say yes, we are very few, mm -hmm. and maybe we need one center. But no, mm -hmm. it's not one because looking at the towns that we have, the cities that we have, mm -hmm. maybe we should say in each and every city mm -hmm. we should have a center mm -hmm. so that people are able to access these centers. People are able to get uh, that kind of assistance or mm -hmm. treatment as early as possible. Because this is a degenerate. And what do we say? Addiction is a brain disease. Mm -hmm. That is what people are forgetting. They just think oh is a brain disease is only when i take alcohol and mm -hmm. you know you know chew cut or i do, I do this no mm -hmm. this is a brain disease and once this problem gets into the brain believe you me getting out is a very big problem yes it needs a lot of medical intervention it mm -hmm. needs a lot of counseling mm -hmm. this is psychological intervention mm -hmm. for some people to be able to get out of it gradually because getting in wasn't that quick even getting out isn't that quick as well. Mm -hmm. We need this kind of assistance. So mm -hmm. yes, we need these centers, not one, mm -hmm. but many, especially within the cities, because this problem is growing within the cities. Mm -hmm. It hasn't reached, you know, you know uh, the, the, uh, up, uh, out there very much. Okay. You know, the suburbs, but they're still coming up. Mm -hmm. We go to the village and we still we already see people are already catching up with internet and yes. all these things. Yes. And where this data, believe you me, a lot of things are happening. Yeah, it's true. So we get to say, yes, we need them. And as much as we have them, again, this is not that's the only thing that we can do. We also need to start dealing with this problem th from the household level. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It doesn't have to get so clinical. Mm -hmm. We can start from the household by what, like, like for example, Lindsay was sharing. Can we encourage our children to do all these other activities instead of yeah. just trying to soothe them with phones? Mm -hmm. with yeah. Anytime a child cries, you just throw at it because you want to go cook mm -hmm. and this is the only consolation price you can give. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Can we go with that child to the kitchen? Mm -hmm. As I cut onions, they are cutting them see what tomatos doing. and doing this. Okay. Sit them on the working space there and mm -hmm. let them take, you know, a blunt knife, let them do something. Okay. So uh, uh, we, instead of just leaving them there in the living room, because with a phone they'll be very quiet. Mm -hmm. Then again, when you talk about these activities, how we encourage children or the, the youth or the youngsters to participate in these activities, because even as you say, the youngsters or the, 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 the youth, even the grown-ups, just as you say, they are also part of this. Yes. Some of them have really gotten so addicted, yeah. it is shocking. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. A whole grown-up seated there, you are talking, for example, there's a visitor who has come to the house and you are there talking and the person is busy on the phone and you wonder, am I really needed here? Okay, yeah, yes. that's, that has become a very big problem. Uh, so, uh, Lindsay, last year, uh, France banned use of mobile phones in primary schools and, say, uh, and, uh, and middle schools. As you wind up, what do you, th if Kenya decided to have like one of these centers in every county, what would you advise? What activities do you think people like you would be interested in so that we get people off their mobile phone uh, addiction? 
probably we would uh, invest in sporting activities mm -hmm. let's say swimming mm -hmm. let's say uh, things like hockey mm -hmm. you know some of these sporting activities that really strain you so mm -hmm. that even at night you don't even have time the to time chat to you go just go and phone. sleep mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and also it also you're able to interact with people because one thing that comes with uh, the phone also is your sociability okay. it decreases so now if I, I, I find you interesting then there's a, there's a reason to put my phone mm -hmm. aside okay so thank you very much guys for really finding time to talk about this i think we'll have we'll have another day where we get to get deeper into social media and bullying and all these things because it's quite a very uh, big topic but what i can say is technology is good uh, we're not going to say that technology is not a good thing it is a good thing that is happening to us but the thing is parents maybe have curfews have limits to when your kids or your when your teenager teenage kids are at home have them go out there and socialize and mingle with others even during events that are held at home so that is what we have for you tonight on y254 news updates my name is patricia morioki do have yourselves a very good night mm -hmm.